Hi everyone, it's Budget Bunny here and today I'm going to be walking you through how we built our new guinea pig cage. I absolutely love how this cage has turned out and I'm so excited to share it with everyone. So the first thing that I wanted to tell you guys about is just what this cage is on. These are actually kitchen cover units that you can purchase at Home Depot. You can get any type of wood that you want, finished, unfinished. As you can see, we did buy really nice large units because I wanted a lot of storage, but these ones are unfinished. So all that means is that if I wanted to, I could paint them or stain them. For now, I think I'm just gonna keep them the color that they are because it doesn't bother me at all, but it made the perfect base to build the guinea pig cage on. So the cage base is equivalent to a 2x5 CNC cage, which is the exact same size that their old cage was. And their kitchen area on top here is 16 inches deep, so it is a little bigger than one grid in width. And then it's the equivalent of three grids long. And I would like to also note that a 2x5 is what is considered suitable for three piggies and I just have two piggies so it is a lot of room for both of my boys. Oh, look at my sweet sleepy piggy. Sammy you're so cute. What a cute boy you are. So the majority of this cage is constructed out of melamine and plexiglass and you can get large sheets of melamine for only $30 at Home Depot. I think our sheet was eight foot by five foot. Um, so that's a really large piece and we actually have some spare pieces left over. And then the plexiglass itself was pretty expensive, but that was only because I wanted this front piece here, which is 72 inches long, to be one long strip. And because of that, it meant buying a $90 piece of plexiglass. Also, because we didn't use a lot of plexiglass, it's just the front of the cage, there is a lot left over. Now, for us, that's okay because we still have our Hamster Scarlet's cage to construct at some point and we are planning to use the rest of the plexiglass for her cage. So for us, it made sense to just purchase the larger piece and have that one solid sheet here. But you could also purchase the smaller sheets and then cut your dimensions. Um, it would just mean putting some kind of support system wherever your multiple pieces are to make the front. So when I was looking for different ideas on building our cage, I knew that I wanted something gridless. Now that their cage is not on top of our rabbit cage, I didn't need to have something that was constructed out of grids. Then Laura, Piggy Pig Pigs, made her cages and she used um, melamine shelving units from Ikea and I absolutely loved the look of them. So that was kind of the inspiration behind the construction of this cage. I knew I wanted plexiglass and now that I had the option to get away from the storage grids, which are still an economical and excellent way to house your pets, I am not bashing them at all, but I just wanted something that was a little more fresh and open looking. So like I said, um, we didn't go with any IKEA units. We actually went to Home Depot and were able to find all of the supplies there. So one thing I did want to mention was the height of the plexiglass is six inches. And this is the exact same height that the front of our old cage was, which was also constructed out of plexiglass. It's a height that my boys cannot jump over. They can barely put their noses up and if they want to, they can put their front paws up and look out at me, but they can't jump this. I have had a lot of people concerned about that, but like I said, their previous cage had the exact same height on the front of their cage and there were no issues. Of course, it's gonna depend on your pet and also the size of your pet because there are quite a few very large guinea pigs out there. I've seen ones that are larger than Willow, who is our smallest rabbit. My boys weigh uh, just under a pound, Finney's just under a pound, Sammy is about 
1.3 pounds so they are small boys and this height works perfectly for us. So as you can see, for the perimeter of the cage, we used the melamine, and again, that was just to cut down on how much plexiglass we were using. There was no point in really putting plexiglass along the wall edges because all you're going to see behind that is blue wall. So that's why we used the melamine along the top, and you can see under here that the base is all melamine as well. And the melamine is perfect for guinea pigs because it's wipeable. Um, you can clean it just like you would clean Coraplast with a little bit of disinfectant and wipe it down. You can also scrub at it too. So that's why it makes a great cage base. And what Mr. BB actually did was bolt all of the melamine pieces right to the wall just so that it's nice and secure. So to hold the plexiglass in place, as you can see, the plexiglass really doesn't move. It's nice and secure. We found these wooden edges. Now this was with all the doweling and the quarter round and everything at Home Depot, but it's these wooden 90 degree pieces. And all we did was we kind of slid, held the plexiglass right here against the melamine base. And then we slid this. So this kind of acts as a little shelf to hold the plexiglass into place and then we just drilled and popped screws in to attach everything right to the melamine base. So everything is nice and sturdy and secure. All these are our little um, white screw cap covers. So it just makes everything look a little more polished than seeing all these little silver tops of screw heads. And you can see that around each corner we also used a piece of that um, corner wood. And again, this is just to offer extra support because you've got a piece coming right here and a piece coming right here. And because this corner was just plexiglass, Mr. BB wanted it to be very secure. So he just actually cut a few pieces out of the melamine and just drilled them right into the melamine base here just to make this nice sturdy corner unit so you can see everything is securely in place. And you can't even really see that once it's in the cage because my fleece covers it up. So you can see right along here that wooden track goes all the way down the cage. And Mr. BB did the exact same thing with the second level and with this piece that's plexiglass and plexiglass. Again, he made, he cut these little wooden blocks just out of the melamine and then drilled them right into the melamine base to create this really sturdy corner to offer extra support. Now the other thing that we did do was um, seal everything with aquarium sealant. It's, it dries clear so it is very hard to see but you might be able to see a little right there. It looks a little tiny bit goopy on the plexiglass. That's aquarium sealant. So you can't apply this when your pets are in here and it does need 40, it needs 24 hours to dry, 48 hours before you add water to it. So just to be on the safe side, I sealed everything in this cage and then waited 48 hours before putting the boys in. But what that does is it really protects your edging um, where all your corners are, where the plexiglass meets the melamine from any urine or poop or water spilt, anything like that. So I think if you're gonna to go to the troubles of constructing a cage like this, um, you wanna protect it. So I would definitely recommend the aquarium sealant. I actually thought I was gonna to have to go all the way to a fish specialty store like Big Al's, but all of the small pet shops around here carried it, including Pet Value. So it is a really easy product to find. Now the other thing that you can get, because of course with all this cutting you do get unfinished edges with the melamine and it's just like it's, and it's just pretty much press board underneath this melamine coating, but you can get something that's called melamine tape and basically you can use either an iron heated up to run it over top and what it does, that melts the glue to put it into place. 
or what we found worked better because we didn't think to put the tape on until after everything was attached to the wall was using a blow dryer. So a blow dryer did the same effect but didn't melt my paint on the wall which actually happened when we started using the iron because of course the iron is running along and touching your wall. So if you've already built a cage and attached it to your wall, I would highly suggest the blow dryer method. The blow dryer is a little safer too if you're younger. Now this tape is a little wider than the melamine edge. So, so then all you do is take your Zacto knife and just cut along the side. Now, just a reminder, we did use really heavy duty power tools when constructing this cage. So if you're under 18 or you are not familiar with these tools, please do not attempt this on your own. You need someone who is skilled to, um, to cut and build things like this safely because I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt attempting it on their own. All right, so I'll just talk a bit about the second level now. So all this ramp is, is a piece of wood. I accidentally told everyone that it was a um, two by four when I did my building the guinea pig cage video. It's not a two by four, it's just a regular piece of untreated pine wood. And all Mr. BB did was use these really sturdy hinges and he's attached it into the wooden ramp and into the melamine top. And that just means that I can lift it up so that I can clean underneath. And all that's covering the ramp to give it traction are these fleece leg warmers that I find at the dollar store. And they come in a pack of two, so it's perfect because you need two for the length of the ramp. And Mr. Budget Bunny also cut this wooden leg just from a two by two. It's actually not held into place by anything other than pressure. So all I have to do when I'm cleaning is just pull it out and then I can just pop it back into place and I mean the place is going to change where it is all of the time because I'm just putting it wherever but I just try to keep it when I'm putting it back into place um, towards the front corner because that's what we're just trying to support here. So on the second level because I knew I would want to be able to hang my hay sack and my water bottles, Mr. Budget Bunny. Um, made the melamine backing 15 inches tall instead of six inches like the bottom level is. And that way that put the water bottles at a good height for the piggies. My hay sack hangs a little low, but that's okay because I make them. So I'll just make a new one. And all that Mr. Budget Bunny did was use these little eye hooks. We figured out what height would be good for the water bottles and all he did was screw those into place. Now what he did with the top part of the water bottle is he actually took the little hooks off and then the little tiny hook that's left, he put that onto the end of the eyelet and then, or the eye hook, and then screwed that in. So this actually cannot come off. It just um, gives me enough room to pop it up when I'm changing them so this would come off all the way but otherwise I don't actually need hooks anymore so I kind of like that it makes it nice and sturdy against the cage and then you can see just the bottom um, hanging hook part of the water bottle just sits right on the bottom hooks there so those were an easy way to attach the water bottles to the back of the cage and also make them nice and sturdy you can also see that we use these hooks along the bottom of the second level and that's just so that I have somewhere to hang things like their, um, their little veggie hangers or their veggie balls. I also have some rattles and toys and things that I haven't hung up yet but that these now give me the option to hang. Now the other thing that Mr. Budget Bunny did is create a shelf just out of 2 by 2s and these are bolted directly into the wall. Again, just like with the shelves that the bunnies have, you do need to use a stud finder and do this properly so that everything's nice and secure, but it makes a nice sturdy base. And because this cage is up more at eye level, you could see the two by twos from the front. The guinea pigs can't reach them, but you could see them. So I just painted them the exact same color as the wall to blend in a little more. 
So the only other thing I did do to kind of finish off this cage, just to make it a little fresher, was I did paint the outside trim. Now, I didn't use a pet safe paint only because all of the trim that you see running along here, there is no way that the guinea pigs have access to that to chew. So it is okay to use just a regular, I just used my regular white baseboard paint from um, Home Depot to paint that trim and just um, freshen it up a bit because it does come as a white but especially once you've drilled all those screw holes and everything in there you'll probably want to um, just apply a coat of paint. If you are going to paint anything that your guinea pigs could have access to so, so anything that's in the cage or even along in here you definitely want to make sure that it is a pet safe paint just to be on the safe side because you wouldn't want your piggies to nibble on anything and accidentally get hurt because the paint was toxic to them. So that is basically just an overview of how we built this new cage. I absolutely love the look of it. I love how fresh it looks, how open it looks, and it actually was a lot easier to build than we thought. It came up together a lot quicker than we thought. We had the whole thing built in probably uh, half a day, I would say, but the longest part was waiting for that aquarium sealant to dry. Um, now, the reason that we did use aquarium sealant is because you need to make sure that you get something that is pet safe. Home Depot in the US apparently sells a type of caulking that is um, pet safe. However, Home Depot in Canada didn't carry that product and I would rather be safe than sorry anyways. Like I said, it was very easy to locate. All of our local pet stores had it and it was about $10 a tube and I used less than one tube on this entire cage. And I just think for all of the work that you're putting into it, it's definitely necessary but it does have very strong fumes and your pets cannot be in the room when you apply it. So total cost for this cage, minus of course the kitchen cupboard units underneath because you know you could put this on a table, you could really build it and just have it on the ground. You could put a cage wherever you want but we just wanted a lot of storage underneath. So the cage cost itself was probably about $150 or $170. But again, the costliest part of it was the plexiglass, which, like I said, you could definitely cut down in price if you don't need your front long piece, that 72 inch piece, to be one long piece. That was the only reason why we had to spend so much on the plexiglass. But again, we can put it towards Scarlet's Cage, so for us it was totally worth the investment. Anyways, if you have any more questions about the cage, you can leave your comments down below. I'll also put a link to um, us building the guinea pig cage because that kind of shows you step by step what we did, which will probably clear up any further questions you have. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye!